Hello, everybody. The UConn-Iowa women's Final Four game was the most watched basketball game of any kind in the SPN history. It was a duel between superstar Caitlin Clark and Paige Beckers, and of course both team defenses were completely geared to stopping them, and both teams dipped into the Warriors' playbook to borrow strategies that Steph Curry used to try to overcome the double teams that he's seen all his career. Here's an example from the finals. The Warriors bring, of all people, Clay Thompson up to screen for Steph Curry. Normally you use a big guy to screen because they're just bigger and wider, but also their defender is bigger and slower and it's someone that Steph Curry can attack. So why would they bring up Klay Thompson? It's a counter strategy against Cleveland's blitzing of Steph Curry. So Klay sets a screen. You see both defenders following Steph side by side, giving him the Shining Twins defense. We want you to play with us forever and ever. In the meantime, Klay Thompson set the screen and immediately slips. So Steph with a quick pass, Klay is completely open for a three. Back in the final four, Caitlin Clark has the same problem of the entire UConn defense blitzing and shadowing her. So they send Kate Martin, a guard, not a bigger center, to come set a screen. In fact, she doesn't even stick around to set a proper screen. She slips the screen immediately. Nowadays, we also call this a ghost screen, I guess because it sounds spookier. Two defenders going to Caitlin Clark. This play is working perfectly. Now we have Martin completely open at the three-point line. Caitlin Clark tries to whip a pass, just like Steph passed to Clay. And it's only a great play by Nika Mule. Not only does she get the steal, but she also runs the break. Now it's a three on two. Mule runs this really well. She dribbles right at her defender, which forces the defender to stop the ball. Paige Beckers, who's been trying to get free all game, is now unabated to the three-point line. Nice little pass, and Beckers walks into an open three. Nika Mule with the quick hands. Yoink. UConn has the same problem of how do you get Paige Beckers free, or at least use her gravity to make openings for other players. So here they go to another set from the Steph Curry playbook, a good old-fashioned floppy. In a floppy, you get the ball up top, and then you have your shooter, Steph Curry, running under the basket, going to the right, where he's got two screens. So Steph emerges, takes the two screens, but there's a second part to Floppy, which is that Clay Thompson is going to get his own pin down. Petrulia here setting a screen for Clay. Two defenders go to Clay, but Clay doesn't care about that. So we have Beckers running under the basket. She's going to get one screen, two screens, and come out this side. The poor defender Marshall has to run through this forest of screens. She maneuvers around one second screen. Good navigation. While Beckers was torturing Marshall, on the other side, there's the second part of the floppy play. This first screener now gets her own pin down screen and she pops out. Her defender has to navigate the screen, including a nice little hip check from Edwards. Good hustle to stay with her. Iowa tries some off-ball screens to get Caitlin Clark free. She takes one screen from Stolke, but Mule is just super glued to her. And then she immediately cuts back to get it. Rescreen. So the whole thing devolves into a high pick and roll. Here's the big coming to set a more traditional screen for Caitlin Clark. Usually if you're going to blitz Clark, you blitz with her defender and the big's defender because those are the two closest defenders usually. But UConn does something very, very tricky. They send a third person to surprise Clark with the trap. I love this. Now her player is completely free. This trap works super well. Caitlin Clark is completely surprised by this weird third party trap. Now someone comes to rescue her and the defense is rotated to cover her. So now you have three defenders guarding two players. Can you find the open player? Well, here she is raising her arms. The Iowa coach over here gives a helping hand saying, look who's open, da 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 da, -da right over here. But Marshall is having her own problems. She's getting blitzed by two players as well. I guess UConn figures in for a penny, in for a pound. She barely gets out and dishes it to Martin, the Edwards, the general of the defense here is pointing out the open person saying we need someone to come cover and so finally someone rotates but they get away with it so only five on the shot clock so she just drives right at beckers and makes a nice little move so when all else fails you can try this underrated steph curry strategy in the 22 finals boston spent game five with marcus smart 
just absolutely face guarding Steph Curry. You know, the play hasn't even started yet, and Marcus Smart is giving him a, a loving hug. Smart is not even looking at the ball. He's just holding Steph. He says, I'll love him and kiss him and call him George. He's just doing everything he can to stop the ball from getting to Steph. And so Steph says, you know, if you're going to do that, I'm just going to walk away. And so as Steph just kind of chills out on the side, Marcus Smart still in his jersey, that means that the Warriors are playing four on four here. There's more space now for people to attack and the game should become easier for the offense if Smart is just going to voluntarily stay off court with Steph. But <laughs> Steph is just continuing to drift away. Here Steph is about to back so far away that he's going to be off camera and that means there's a lot more space for Wiggins to attack. So they do set Clark to run off this pin down screen but Nika Mule does a fantastic job staying with Clark. Clark tries cutting into open space here, but unfortunately this defender shades over to, to stop Clark. So now at this point Clark says, all right, I'm just going to use the Steph Curry strategy of standing way out of the way. You can see her make hand motion saying, you just run the offense without me. And so now she's standing over here, Mule just face guarding her and keeping the ball from getting to her. Now it's a four on four and the rest of the court. So it's a little handoff, Martin, attacks off the dribble. Nika Mule sees that this play does not involve Caitlin Clark, so she eyes it with the detached objectivity of a scientist. I am pledged to never interfere in the affairs of other alien life forms. So Martin just gets to one on one. Good spin move. We do have some help coming at the last second, but it's just too late. Martin sneaks it in. Huge bucket. Do you recognize what's going on here? This is a slightly fancier version of floppy. Shooter runs under the basket, one screen, two screens. Paige Becker's over here, except the second screen is now going to swing out to the other side and get her own two screens. Marshall does a good job of going over the top and meeting Becker's on the other side. So this play devolves into a pick and roll. Aaliyah Edwards walks over and angles her body so that Beckers can really run her defender into the screen. Absolutely gets all of her with the screen. And now Beckers dribbles at the big defender. She pulls up. This looks exactly like a shot. And Stolke has to contest this. Edwards rolls after setting the screen. And look at this gorgeous pass. Edwards with a good catch and nice finish. This is a simple but beautiful play. Beckers runs under the basket. Edwards is positioned to set a screen here. For all the world, it looks like Beckers is going to cut to the top and run her defender into the screen. And Marshall says, why wait? Let me beat the traffic and get there first. So Beckers helps her along with a little shove. And Beckers reverses and goes the other way. And that's going to leave Beckers completely open in the corner. She'll be seeing that shot in her nightmares. Let's just go back and appreciate Edwards' screen here. She starts off screening in this direction, which will help Beckers cut to the top. But then look at how elegantly she changes the angle of her screen from this way to that way, just by pivoting on that foot. And now suddenly she's this wall in this direction and Marshall runs smack into her. And I don't know how much of this is a flop and how much of this is an elbow. It's really hard to tell, but Marshall ends up completely flat on her back. Well, this video is getting long, so let's wrap up with a celebration audit. Near the end of the game, Nika Mule comes up with another steal that leads to herself shooting a massive three that put Yukon in position to steal this game. First, good reflexes from Nika, immediately putting up the three-point celebration. This is the OK three, thumb and forefinger on the one, two, three. Excellent form. Let's look on the bench. We've also got Brady on the sideline with the dual OK3s, very nice. In the background, we've got Samuels here putting up dual three guns. This alternate form of the three celebration and is accepted in all levels of basketball, high school, college, and pro. If she had been flashing her guns back and forth, then that would be more of a Yosemite Sam, I'm a rootin' tootin' three point shootin' celebration. But instead, this is really like a kind of Christ the Redeemer statue in Rio de Janeiro a Christ the Three Deemer, if you will. Haha. <laughs> oh, I'm a little concerned here. We've got DeBerry over here. Appropriate level of enthusiasm, but these are not three-point celebrations. These are two raised fists. I don't know. But given the importance of the moment and the exuberance, we're going to find this uh, an acceptable celebration 
In fact, if you review the tape, let's see who gets the prize for the most premature celebration. Okay, here's Arnold about to pass back. And look, DeBerry is actually the first one to put her arms out. Mule has barely received the ball. This definitely counts as most premature. Oh, she is very premature. Look, she's got both arms up before Mill can even get into her shooting motion. And we do have Christ the Redeemer coming in. In second place here, both excellent premature celebrations. Full marks to both of them.